is being recorded. Look at that. Uh, so, Mark, I think you're uh, ready to kind of uh, kick us off on uh, on today's AMA. I certainly am. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ru. Um, mm. So, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, this is our second AMA session in less than a month, <laughs> which is uh, quite regular for us. Um, we have said that we'd like to do them more often because. Um, we really enjoy doing them and it's a great way for us to share some information in terms of uh, the latest developments on the, on the company. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Gianluca Huera of Virgilia, Virgilius Wealth. Uh, welcome Gianluca. We're going to hear more from Gianluca in a moment. Hello um, there, Gian thank you. Hi Gianluca. So Gianluca uh, is our connection with our strong Italian uh, investor base of angels, uh, which some of you might be aware of. I'd just like to uh, take this opportunity to say quick thank you. So uh, I noted from my notes that the, the last time we did an AMA session, which was some five weeks ago, uh, we had just hit 100% funding on our Cedars campaign with 250 investors. And I'm very happy to say, I think the whole team is very happy to say, we're now at 777 investors um, and 310% funded. And we're hoping to get to uh, £500,000 raised on that platform. Uh, in but by the time it closes on Friday, so um, we're we're really really happy about that, and again a big thank you to all of those seeders investors. So we have uh, more people on the line today, um, some angels uh, and some other uh, seeders community. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And we the way we're going to run the sessions, we're going to field some questions from Jan Luca uh, and the angels that he works with, and also some other questions from our community base, um, which came in before the call. If you haven't checked out our community yet, please go to community.pink.io uh, and it's a great place to lo meet lots of other uh, lovely Pinksters in, uh, in, in the Pink Collective um, who are on a journey together to build uh, a financial future. So yeah, if you haven't been there, check out community.pink.io. Okay, before we do all of that, we're going to do some quick introductions. Um, I think most people watching this will have seen my face before. Uh, I've been on, all over the, the Cedars campaign in the last kind of five to six weeks. Uh, my name is Mark Little. I'm the C CMO here at uh, Pink uh, and one of um, three co-founders alongside Seth and Ru. And my primary responsibility is about um, obviously marketing, but all things on the B2C side, product and recruiting the crowd, a crowd of predictors around the world. Uh, and I'm particularly passionate about building more equitable business models, um, especially in the area of uh, technology for good and decentralization. Um, I'll just hand over to Seth. Seth, if you could just uh, give a one or two minute introduction to yourself, that would be great. Yeah, um, hey everyone, Seth Ward, uh, yeah, Chief Executive and, and, and Founder of Pink. Um, my background is, is pretty much all um, uh, tech startups going, going back to the 90s, back to, you know, pre-dot-com boom days. Uh, helping um, uh, people and businesses to, to get on the internet initially uh, and then build in all kinds of uh, businesses of, of, of my own. Um, had an exit with uh, 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 another business that uh, used an element of, of crowd wisdom, uh, which, which formed some of the, the, the learnings that we're, we're putting into Pink. Um, and that was helping uh, football clubs to make investment decisions. And now, of course, we are using a uh, mix of crowd wisdom and expert intelligence uh, with the um, uh, addition of artificial intelligence to make the investment decisions in the portfolio here at Pink. And we're doing this to, to help everyday investors, ordinary people like ourselves to, to build a, a better financial future for themselves and their families and to do it in a way um, that suits uh, everybody's individual um, ethics and uh, investment preferences. Fantastic. So I'll hand over to, to, to Ru, I guess. Yeah. John Hi guys. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for attending or uh, watching this post uh, AMA session. Um, the uh, yes, I'm uh, Rupert, and for the eagle-eyed amongst you who have watched our videos before, yes, I've managed to have a haircut. Uh, since uh, uh, the end of lockdown here in the UK uh, on, on, on the weekend. But yeah, I'm um, Chief Ops uh, over here at, um, at Pink, meaning that I get the uh, enviable job, I believe, of executing Seth Vision and, uh, and trying to uh, run the team and obviously make sure that we, uh, we hit our targets uh, for all of our investors as well. So with that said, Mark, should we 
crack on? What's the, what's the plan right now? Well, I'll just ask Jan Luca to introduce himself uh, quickly. Jan Luca, if you could um, just give a bit of background in terms of what you do and, and uh, in your professional background, that would be great. Yes, yes. Thank you, guys. I'm Gianluca Guerra. I came from Italy. I'm CEO of Vitilius Wealth. We are an alternative investment boutique focused on alternative investment. And uh, I think that venture capital and uh, especially fintech startup and blockchain in uh, related startup could be the next big things. So we are happy. We are happy to be involved in Pink. And uh, many thanks for your, for your time and for this chat. Uh, I'm really, really happy for the, for, uh, for the Pink success. And I'm happy to be here to celebrate your great uh, Cedars campaign. Fantastic. So I was, I was going to just, just to follow on from that, for, the, for those that don't actually know, um, Jalika was our very first investor. And it was probably one of the best Christmas presents we ever had because his investment came in on the 26th of December, 2018. Uh, so we hadn't even got into to, 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 to 2019 at that, at that, that stage. So uh, yeah, we're, 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 he's our longest standing. Uh, and uh, we, we hope to... Uh, uh, to be the longest in pink full, t full stop, as long as we can we should, keep hold of you at least. Uh, we should get some Gianluca shaped cuddly toys as our mascots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be great. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, great to have you join us today, Gianluca. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I understand you have quite a few questions from your angel investor base via Virgilius. So, uh, we're going to jump between those questions and the questions posted um, from our community. So I think we'll start off with a question from Gianluca about Cedars. So over to you, Gianluca. Yes, exactly. Uh, the first and the most important question at the moment is, uh, how's the campaign going? And tell me more about Cedars. Uh, well, as, as Mark has already uh, kind of uh, covered off uh, up, up front, it's been unbelievable. I mean, we... Um, so for, for the purpose of the, the kind of the, the Italian base that perhaps might not have a, uh, a system like this. So Cedars is another fintech here in the UK. They're quite, they're getting on a bit now. I think they're about 10 years old or so. Um, but they um, uh, have really kind of forged what is crowdfunding here in the UK, what is equity crowdfunding. Um, and uh, they've done that with a number of the other platforms uh, in, in the UK as well. And but typically with crowdfunding, you, know, you have to raise uh, an awful lot of money off the platform um, and, you, and then you end up raising a very small amount of money actually on the platform from the, from the base of, of users. What's been so surprising and so exciting for us is that we did it the, the opposite way around. Um, we ended up going to the platform with a very small amount of uh, money at the time and just testing the water, so to speak, to see how crowdfunding would work for Pink and how um, whether or not we can engage with the investor base of uh, of Cedar to invest into us, and it's been incredible. The response has been unbelievable. So we, yeah, as Mark uh, said, I think he said 777 investors. I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's 778 investors now because it's just ticked up while it's been on 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 uh, on screen. Um, uh, and, and yeah, three hundred and thirteen point four percent overfunded. So we couldn't have asked for a better result. Um, that being said, it, it is hard to to do this this style of campaign. You have to publish a, a lot of content like this sort of stuff, uh, and that takes a lot of time out of the day when um, you know ordinarily you might be building the um, uh, building the business. But the, the ultimate result has been very very positive for us. So it's been good. But really, why, why do you think, just building on that question, why do you think Pink has had such a positive response on the Cedars platform, in your view? Well, in, in my, my view, it's really if people are buying into what we are doing as a company. You know, yeah, as, as Seth will, um, will, will tell you, yeah, the reason that this company was started was to help people invest, right? 76% of Western millennials wouldn't pass a, uh, a financial literacy test um myself included before i started working on uh, on pink with, with seth um it is a it is a crying shame that and there are no really good systems in order to either educate yourself or educate yourself in, a, in an environment where you can also benefit yourself um and beyond that um 
benefit from the the the, the funds and the community. So it's it's something that has resonated with us and us and people have uh, have bought into that and uh, it resonates with them too. Is that fair to say, Mark and Seth? Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, we've um, everyone on the team is, is with us because the mission's resonating with us, and, and we know there are other people like us. We're filling this this gap in the market between one type of investment where you just put your money and you you forget about it and you have no influence. Um, it, it doesn't respect your ESG uh, preferences or, or any of your other investment preferences. Um, and they charge high fees for, for a very basic product. And at the other end, you know, you're left to fend for yourself. And so many people are losing money as a result of either not investing or, or doing it incorrectly. And, and, and there's a massive, massive hole in the, in, in the middle of that. And, and, and we're going for that, that, that kind of gap in the market. And yeah, as you say, there's a lot of people that need help. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so my, my perspective on that is, is is that we're tapping into this kind of global macro tension in that it's increasingly difficult to create a financial future for retail investors today. And by working together, we're trying to um, level out the playing fields in that regard and build a more equitable investment platform. And that leads me on nicely to uh, the first question from the community. So um, there's this trend in fintech at the moment about 0% fees. But for those that are closer to Pink, they'll know that the product we're offering to retail investors is a fully managed portfolio. So there's a question from the community, and I'm going to direct this to Seth, and that is, um, what exactly is the, the model? Um, but what is the difference between a personalized <coughs> portfolio and a managed portfolio versus, say, a fund? What, what, what's meant by the terminology, a fully managed portfolio? So in terms of the model, yeah, you know, our mission is to help as many people as possible uh, change their financial future. And what better way is there to do that than to provide a great service completely free of charge? Um, so for ordinary investors um, who are participating and contributing to the decisions that we make in the portfolio, um, they get access to, to, to zero fees. Um, how, how we make our money then is, is by selling services to institutions and managing their money for them. And, and it's that money that allows us to de deliver that service to, to our core market, which is the everyday investors. And so in terms of what's the difference between a, I guess, passive or an actively managed portfolio, um, a, a passive portfolio is one where you, you know, you, you choose usually a very general exposure to the market, to a mix of, of stocks, equities, and, and, and often bonds. And it's very rigid. You're, you know, as the market in general goes up, you, 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 you follow very closely to the average returns of, of, of the market. And when the market's going down, you, you, know, you also go down with it. And we've, we've just seen exactly that, that thing happen in, in March. Most of the, the portfolios and funds out there saw some pretty big losses in, in March. They're, they're clawing some of them back at the moment. Um, but the people that are running those products, even if they know that the market is about to tank, they're not allowed by their regulations or their in, in, in investment uh, memorandums, et cetera, or, or even their technology, they're not allowed to change what's in that portfolio to avoid those losses or, or to maximize gains by changing it. And what we have is a, a, a very different setup. We're, we're, we're actively managed, albeit that we have a very unique way of managing the, the portfolio. And so the regulation that we use, the technology that we use does allow us to, 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 to put the money um, you know, where we think it's gonna perform best as well as where our users are telling us and influencing us uh, in, in respect of their, you know, their ESG preferences uh, as we move forward, uh, as well as where they think the, the profit is going to be made. So we have um, an investment committee, uh, but you know, in, uh, compared to other actively managed portfolios and funds, our investment committee doesn't just have access to all the typical tools and, and data that's out there to make their decisions. We have the added benefit of getting a continuous flow of data from the users in the app who are providing all kinds of predictions and, and research and, and value to us 
combined with the AI that's helping us to work out where the best insights are for each investment decision. And that's how we run the, the portfolio, basically. We're, it's, 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 it's a mix of being able to reflect what the users uh, want us to do and, and being able to, to, to maximize the, the, the profit potential and, and, and keep the money safe, of course. Okay. Thanks, Seth. Um, so in summary, a more sophisticated model for everyday investors is, is what we're trying to bring to market. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's what we're building around this managed portfolio setup. Okay, so I'm going to jump back to uh, Gianluca. Uh, Gianluca, you, should we move on to your second question? Um, yes. About vision. Yeah, sure. So um, for me, Pink was a challenge. Uh, to choose a disruptive startup as Pink and talk to investor in Italy, uh, a venture capital market much younger than uh, UK and USA, it, it was crazy. Uh, but uh, thanks to our analysis, to a little bit of intuition, uh, to the relationship uh, with funders, uh, we were able to collect money and participate in this fantastic journey from the beginning. So now, uh, what do you think about the future of Pink as company and what are the next main targets? So, I mean, in, in, a, in a nutshell, the future of Pink is to build a, a safe, sustainable, profitable, democratized investment platform. If you look at the words behind Rue's head on the, on, the, on the banners there, they kind of say it, it's, you know, invest better together. We've kind of touched on it in, in the previous answer that, um, you know, there's, there's, there's not really any democratized fund or portfolio out there. You've got these extremes. If you, if you go to the full extreme of, of uh, the, the users choosing where the money goes, what you basically have is, is a trading platform where each user can make uh, or has to make all of the, their own investment decisions. And we've seen from uh, many, many uh, examples and, and the statistics that have to go on those trading platforms homepages that most of those users tend to lose their money. And that's not to say that they, there's no value in, in, in everybody's uh, kind of insights and decisions. There's a huge amount of value there, um, but it's, it, you know, it doesn't come from uh, you know, giving um, people the, 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 the full responsibility of making every investment decision. So we've put together a system where we can find the insight and get the most value from um, our tens of thousands and in the future, hundreds of thousands and millions of users all over the world to build a sustainable uh, investment portfolio that reflects people's preferences. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, sir. Um, the, what was the second part of that? It was, that it was, it was about longer term targets. What are the next targets, the main targets? Uh, so, I mean, short, we've got some short term and, and of course, long term targets. The, the short term uh, focus for the business now is to build and release the investor wallet, which gives users all over the world, uh, ultimately the ability to, to invest into that portfolio and, and then to shape the investment uh, decisions according to their ESG preferences. We've got a, a, a target of 10 million pounds under, under management by the end of this year, a much bigger target for, for next year of uh, 100 million by the end of 2021. And um, there are all kinds of other targets that, that, that we have that aren't just uh, monetary. It's that, you know, with the, the amount of features that we have, we, we've got some transparency features so that people can come in and see all of the ESG aspects of any asset that, uh, you know, potentially the fund is going to invest in and to empower users to, to communicate with the companies uh, about the, the, the ESG decisions that they're making. The, there's... Uh, fairly endless list but we've got a, a quite clear uh, and concise and targeted roadmap in, in, in getting to those great thanks Seth and just to note for those of you that are watching that haven't been to our YouTube channel recently uh, there's a video on there Seth, uh, uh, from Seth talking about um, ESG and the importance of that uh, within the pink uh, wider vision so thanks for that answer Seth okay I'm going to jump back to uh, a question from the community now and uh, this is one that uh, I'll answer and, and maybe Rue if you want to chip in as well. So what are the key features of version 2.0 of the app? Um, so 
for those of you that have been following us closely, you will have seen um, last week we released uh, what we call 2.0 version of the beta. Um, so just to take a step back for the last uh, 18 months or so, we've been collecting price prediction data from our globalized crowd uh, through version one of the app. Um, it's a progressive web app and it was a quite a simple price prediction tool across multiple asset classes, Bitcoin, NASDAQ, gold. Um, and we've been collecting that data and driving our proof of concept fund off the back of it. Last week, we um, had a complete refresh of that app, uh, including a new UI, uh, a new UX, of course, um, just to freshen up the look. But we've also added some other really important features. So one of those very important features is something that we call the Fantasy Fund Manager. And uh, as with all things that we do on the, on the crowd app, it's a gamified platform. Um, and it's gamified because we want to incentivize users to come back uh, and use the product again and again. Um, we, you know, which delivers retention, but it makes it a fun and risk-free uh, environment and place to learn about investing. Uh, and so the Fantasy Fund Manager is a virtual portfolio of cash, which we're asking Pinksters to allocate to different asset classes to build a diversified portfolio themselves. They then have particular metrics at which we score them against. And these are metrics that professional fund managers are scored with. So obviously growth, um, but volatility and drawdown, and we'll be adding sharp ratio as well at some point. Uh, and the idea is, is that we're running these quarterly competitions so that Pinksters, um, you know, there's an opportunity to, for, for, for cash prizes on offer, but it's the real idea behind it is learning through doing. So the idea is you come in and use the product on a, on a weekly basis and you learn how to manage a diversified portfolio. Of course, what we're doing on the back end is harvesting that data and, and we're aggregating that data and we're going to be um, running that through Rose AI and again, it gives us further uh, investment insights using this crowd wisdom system that we've built. And all of the time, the AI is uh, looking for the wisdom in the crowd around the world. The second part of that that we're going to be bringing later this year is something called team investing. And we know from crowd wisdom uh, methodology that small teams of between four and eight people working together are much more effective than individuals. So we're going to start to release uh, features which allow Pinksters to create and lead their own uh, team of uh, predictors and investors in the Fantasy Fund Manager uh, with a view to winning the quarterly competitions. And so we think that's a really exciting feature that's coming as a, as a later release in the year. Other features in, the, uh, in, in version 2.0 are newsfeed. So everybody in the app now has a newsfeed. You can select the assets that you want to select. Uh, and you'll get regular update for fundamental news uh, and analysis. And there's also a little feature in there whereby Pinksters can indicate whether a news article is bullish or bearish. And so you can start to see how the crowd are feeling about that particular part, that particular news article. Um, so there's all sorts of really cool features in there. Go and check it out. If you're not a member of the Pink crowd yet, then obviously I'd encourage you to do so. Go to beta.pink.io, have a play with it, jump on the community, let us know what you think. Um, so yeah, have fun with that. My uh, my two cents to add on the end, Mark, is that it's, it. it's fun. <laughs> so, yeah, the the new the new version of the app, the uh, yeah, the old version was was great in terms of generating uh, points, but with Fancy Fund Manager, I've really got into it in the last few days. Like it's really become my new kind of go-to part of the app. Um, and it, you know, because you can live track essentially exactly how this fund portfolio is performing and uh that's 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 been really exciting for luddites like me um okay. uh the uh you yeah, know and of course what we're trying to you know, trying to trying to help is is um help everybody get a better handle on you know how you should best put your portfolio together yeah, so exactly. it's, it's been really interesting in, in um in, in that respect yeah and you know i'd, I'd add on that and just say look it's just the start we're continuing to add features and the features that we're adding are always a making it more fun but really it's about a place to learn about investing uh, and becoming better at making price predictions and of course the more that you do that the more you stand to earn not just in terms of education but you earn wisdom points that have monetary value uh, and are converted to monetary value in the managed investment portfolio and of course the more, more you contribute the more you're contributing to the wider collective and that's what that's what pink's all about so yeah, do check it out if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet. 
just uh, yeah, it's we, we, we think it's pretty good. Okay, uh, I'm going to jump back to a question from Gianluca. Um, so Gianluca, if we could go on to question number three, which I yes. think is about technology. Yep. Yeah. So guys, in terms of technology, um, yeah, I believe in pink because pink is a concrete project. Uh, there are many crypto projects uh, difficult to understand uh, and, and not usable. Uh, pink is clear, specific and useful. But uh, tell me something about the future of your technology and uh, about uh, the, the fintech and the artificial intelligence uh, uh, in, in the next future. What will be this, uh, this link between these two amazing technology? Seth, uh, who, who wants to tell us? Seth? Yeah, I mean, it's, for, for us, the, obviously, the, the, the tech is, is really important. Um, the, the, the way that we've built our AI is to hunt out um, insights for, for investment decision making. But for, it's, it's very important that it's not really at the forefront. You know, it's, it, it's not, um, we don't want a project that's complicated. Uh, we want everything to be very simple uh, and enjoyable and sticky uh, and, and, and full of learning and, and, uh, and, and build a community where people are coaching each other. Uh, it, it's really about the community at, at, at the forefront and the, and the you know, the, the tech and the AI is, is, is very much in the, in the background. It's, it's um, unlike a lot of kind of AI projects where it's about making uh, humans and, and jobs obsolete. We're kind of the opposite. We're, um, we're enhancing and, and augmenting people's decision making powers. Uh, by you know um, filtering through huge amounts of data and, and that's the focus for us to, to very much keep it there in the background and and allow us to come to better um, collaborative decisions and, and and that's where the the, the vision is fantastic um, really anything to add to that or no, I, I mean, I, uh, I, I won't because uh, I'm conscious of, of time, so I don't want us to, to, to drag on too uh, uh, long. Okay. Uh, Mark, should we uh, have another one of uh, Jan Lika's uh, questions? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah, Jan, Jan Lika, let's move on to your, I think it's your penultimate oh. question. Okay. Question number yeah. four. Yeah. Do, do we have any questions from the community? No? Oh, we'll, we'll come back to those in a moment. So okay. we've, we've got a few of those lined up. So. Okay, uh, so guys, you, 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 have, you have worked so hard uh, over the past years and traveled a lot uh, all over the world uh, and uh, you won prize uh, and, and now, now you are growing incredible. Uh, is this way to, to, to become the, a unicorn? <laughs> uh -huh. Which is, in your opinion, the, the most important element to growth and to, to become a unicorn? Uh, that's right. That's my goal. Yeah, it's a good question. Is it the way to become a, a unicorn? Look, we, we, we've always set out, always set out with this company to obviously grow the valuation of it. That's very important to us and our, our uh, investors. However, it is we have seen with fintech uh, world it's been in a bit of a bubble and it has been growing far too fast for its own valuations and we think that that's a, a massive issue so we always set out with pink to create a sustainable uh unicorn which might be a bit of an oxymoron but we are um uh committed to uh, to that so that's why we're, we're pursuing revenue very very early on in our in our journey and yeah, you know, when you compare us to some of the, the huge fintechs that, uh, that are out there that are growing to, to, to billions of, uh, of dollars in valuation over the last sort of three years, um, they have been very much focused on growth, 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 and, and not worried about revenue. Now that COVID's hit, that's really caused them a lot of issues, and they're having to, to um, shelve a lot of their staff. They're having to rethink about their, their funding plans. Uh, it is it's become very very problematic and if you do any kind of curse research about the big kind of fintechs you, you'll find that information out um, yeah so pursuing revenue early on has been uh, has been a key uh, for us 
But we think that by pursuing revenue and having a kind of a tenacious growth curve, uh, that is really how you're able to create a sustainable uh, unicorn. And the end of it all, we don't know. We're just uh, following a, a new plan. We try not to follow uh, others too much in this in this part. I mean, there are, there are obviously we take input and see what um, other fintechs have done in this sector. Um, but we 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 try to cut our own curve. So a great example of that actually is the way that we make our revenue. So. We're not a uh, retail investment app in, in terms of that. That's not the way that we make our money. So if you put us in the category of somebody like Nutmeg or Moneybox or Wealth of Files or another um, uh, wealth manager uh, like that, we, we're just not in the same, we're not built in the same way. Whereas those companies might struggle with, with gaining enough revenue because it's all driven by uh, retail assets and management, management even. all of our revenue is driven through our B2B relationships. And, and so that's how we can we can kind of hit both sides of the curve. Anything to add, Seth, Mark? I think we're pressed for time a little bit, but so um, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's uh, a, a good answer. Okay, um, two more questions then guys. I'll go from one, one from the community and, and one last question from Gianluca. So the, the one from the community is about teams. So, Seth, we will ask you both to kind of answer on this because there's a couple of questions on it. Um, one is about uh, the investment committee specifically, who, who sits in the investment committee and, and what sort of financial background do they have? And the other one is broader and it's uh, what makes you think as a team you can crack this challenge? Um, so I guess that's a company-wide question. Mm. Uh, Seth, we, could I invite you to comment? Let me take the, the investment committee and I'll do the broader one. Yeah, so I mean, we have uh, a small but growing investment committee, and of, of course, the, the way that we're structured, you know, with tens of thousands of researchers, it allows us to have a much more compact decision-making uh, committee. Uh, at, at the head of that is is Mark Borwick, and he's in incredibly experienced. He's he's managed uh, funds, uh, ten billion dollar plus over um, decades, actually through multiple recessions. Um, completely unfazed, you know, by kind of the, the decision making that goes into, you know, running a fund through a, through a, a, a situation like we're going through at the moment. Um, we have uh, people uh, with many years experience, uh, BlackRock, um, we have uh, kind of more uh, trading based uh, people on that committee. And we are talking to, I think we've got three people uh, on the verge of, of adding to the, the six on the committee at the moment. And as we um, build the AUM and we have more and more assets in particular asset classes, uh, we're just uh, picking out uh, people with relevant uh, experience. And of course, we're, we're replicating the, the, the core approach of, of re removing bias. So we're making sure that all of the people on the committee are coming to the decision-making uh, part of the uh, of things with with very different insights and um, approaches to technical analysis, fundamental analysis, uh, all the all the different uh, areas of uh, investment that that we need to bring to bear. Fantastic. And, and Rue, could you answer the second question, which is about the broader team? What makes you think as a team you can you can crack this challenge? Um, well, it's, it's taken us some time to get to the team that we, we currently have, but I, I'll, I'll preface that, that we're, we're still not there. You know, we, we, we have the right kind of core, at, at least right now, but we still need to hire a lot more people. You know, I'm acutely aware of that we are not diverse enough in, in our team. You know, we, that is something that needs to be fixed and something that we are actively trying to, uh, uh, to help right now. And then there's uh, beyond that, the, the, there is the growth in, in, in general. I mean, if you look at a, 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 you know, your, standard, your standard unicorn fintech, uh, which you know, as we try not to, to follow down their line, they, they have got you know, several hundred, if not thousand uh, employees. Um, and uh, all of those people are very, very important to the, to the team. Now we're uh, many, many kind of miles behind those guys right now. Um, but it is important that we, uh, every single person that joins Pink understands the mission of Pink and what we're trying to uh, achieve, who we're trying to help. The fact that this is not just 
for you it is for everybody and those might include people that you don't like um but that is what happens when you try and build something for the for the whole world it's got to be yeah you got to you got to drive that forward so yes we have the team right, right that's right for right now um we're growing i'd encourage anybody who's watching this is interested uh or knows anybody that would like to be, be involved in uh fintech to please reach out through hello at pink.com uh, not pink.com we haven't got that work with that that url this just yet hello at pink.io um and um uh yeah we, we'd love to speak to anybody that's uh, that wants to help us grow yeah thanks for you and I, I i just add to that and i'd extend the invitation to pinksters in the crowd so you know, from, from, the, from the outset of this project, we've said, look, as the crowd become more uh, a fay with the project and what we're doing, um, and as we get to know them, we can start to understand talent within the crowd. And certainly we've, we've started going down that route and we've brought people into the team from the crowd. So um, we have pinksters that are now working with us either on a part-time or full-time basis in countries all over the world and uh, in different functions. So that's really, really exciting for us as well. Um, so as Ruth says, if you are interested and you think you have the talent and, and what it takes to uh, join Team Pink, then, then please reach out. Okay, um, so I think we're going to move on to our last question. Uh, and back to Gianluca for, for, for that one. So uh, yeah, Gianluca, over to you for yeah. your fifth yes, and final yes. question. So we will continue to support Pink uh, even if uh, Rupert don't, don't know the, the right, uh, the right uh, internet address of the company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in fairness, we do want to buy Pink.com, but it's, uh, it's slightly outside the budget range right now, as in Luke. We were focused on growth. <laughs> okay. So the last one, probably it, it, it's the most important for investors. And uh, what is the next stage uh, on, the thing, on the fundraising journey? Would you be able to take that one? That is probably, yeah, that's probably sure. best, yeah, best yeah, for me yeah. rather than responding to, uh, to Nikki for the meeting that I'm now missing. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, so the next um, stage of our fundraising journey is really focusing on the Series A. Uh, so uh, as we wrap up Cedars and, and end our, our kind of what we're calling our Seed B at the moment round, um, it, we're focused into revenue towards the uh, end of the year. So that's, that's, that's coming very, very soon. In fact, we should have early revenue in the next month or so. Um, and uh, and launching the investor wallet in Q4. Um, as we head into next year, it's very important that we have our Series A lined up. And we've actually already started talking to those Series A investors now. So they're, they're ordinarily never get involved with a, a, a company this early on. We're very, very fortunate that we, we've created, generated enough buzz that they've been in contact with us straight off the bat. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased that we've, we've got a, you know, a, a whole bunch of meetings set up in December already to start talking about that for a close in June. That's where we, where, where we plan to be uh, by next year. And of course, with that comes the growth of the uh, growth of the company and the growth of the valuation. We're targeting a 30 million valuation at that stage. Just right now, we're raising on a 10 million valuation cap on a convertible note. Um, so you can kind of do the maths and see where that kind of nets out next year. Um, but um, that, yeah, that's what we're targeting. We know we need to, to raise some more money next year. It's going to be between four and eight million pounds that we're going to have to raise in terms of uh, spearheading the growth as we grow even uh, broader as we head towards the US, as we uh, gain more regulations and more areas and more employees, et cetera, et cetera. We have to, we have to take on more capital in order to, um, uh, to do that. But it's a very exciting uh, time. Yeah, really, really exciting to, to go towards that. And, the, and I can say that the names that are involved for the Series A now are probably some of the largest and best VCs in the world. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're very excited to be talking to them. Did that answer the question? John Luca, did that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. Many thanks. Fantastic. Okay, so I think we're going to wrap it up there in the interest of time. Um, thank you very much to John Luca for joining us and, and dialing in from Italy and for the questions. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Rue. Uh, and of course, thanks again to all of our investors uh, now around the world whether they be our uh, angel investor base in Italy via Virgilius 
or our seeders and investors as well. So um, big thank you again for everyone at Team Pink. Now that you're part of the journey, um, please stay in contact. Please follow us. Um, you can follow us on all of the usual social platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and uh, for those of angel investors, you will see our monthly updates on our investor newsletter. So thank you very much again, uh, everyone. And uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you. Thank Cheers you. Guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.